Hi, I'm Alex, this is Tank Tested, and you're looking at the work of Dennis Wong, one of the most knowledgeable aquascapers in the world. Next up is an interview with Dennis where I tried to focus on some of the questions I'm often asked by scapers just starting out in the hobby. If you have more questions you'd like me to ask experts in the future, please leave them in the comments. Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Dennis Wong. I think my path is not too different from the rest of the folks. You start out by having a fish tank and you get buy some plants to accompany the fish and you try to create a natural environment for the fish. But over time, you become more and more uh, involved in the growth of the plants. And from growing plants, it leads to aquascaping. And um, yeah, I think that that journey is shared by many people who do this hobby. What's the best size aquarium for a beginner aquascaper? I think it depends on how much budget that person is endowed with. So, I mean, if he was rich and he's like, I have a few thousand to do, to do this, uh, you can start straight with a uh, four feet, uh, like a 120p. I think that that is uh, one of the best dimensions for competitions and for general display as well. So I'll say a 120p, if you have money to burn and you know that you are going to be committed uh, to this craft. If you're not, I think that um, like a 12 gallon long is actually a nice dimension. Um, I think that longer tanks are, are easier to skip, yeah, rather than tall tanks for various reasons. I think that uh, you, are, you are a beginner with not that much funds. Then even a small tank such as, yeah, the, I think this is, a, this is like a standard two feet tank. Yeah, it's a very nice dimension to work with. Yeah, just don't get something that is too tall. Get something that is standard dimension or shorter. When it comes to lighting, what do you recommend? I think that lighting is one of the most complex subjects uh, in a current plant size. But despite being the most complex subject, it's an extremely easy answer that I can give practically to the newest or newbies. Just buy the light fixture of a tank in which you like that is growing the same kind of plants that you are trying to grow. Yeah, then you can ignore all the other thousand and one variables because you have the same equipment as the tank that is running with the plant successfully. So that is my quickest and shortest answer. And I think that even if you are an expert, uh, you can copy this concept. So for example, I bought the same bulbs and uh, same, the same color T5 bulbs as Tom Barr did, as Joe Harvey did, because I like their tanks. Um, yeah, so I'll say that to, to, to cut short, you know, all the thinking about, oh, how much power does this like produce? Um, how, do, how do, what, what plant growth form does it produce? Just copy the tank that you like. Uh, and unless you're the first person using the light, there'll always, always be someone that you can learn from. And in, on the internet today, uh, many people post their tank pictures and stuff. So you can also ask them, uh, how has the light been working for you to get a first-hand experience? What is the most important factor in a successful planted aquarium? I think that the, the one area um, that most aquarists still under tune is carbon dioxide. Yeah. And I think that carbon dioxide is more complicated than it looks. Something that uh, beginners do not realize until they try growing more difficult plants. So a huge spectrum of uh, variables um, affect the way CO2 injection is done. And I think that it, it takes uh, most hobbies quite a bit of experience before they can tune their CO2 accurately. Does that mean you don't recommend CO2 for beginners? Mm, I think that I would recommend CO2 simply because the results come a bit more quickly. So as a beginner, um, if you like seeing changes you know, day to day, CO2 will give you that, something that the low-tech tanks uh, do not. Uh, the, low, the changes in low-tech tank occur, occur across days, weeks, uh, months. And I think for new, aqua, new aquarists, um, to get that quick feedback between uh, you doing something and in a few days you see the effects on the plants, it makes for a much uh, better learning. Because within a short period of a few weeks, you learn many concepts. Whereas uh, a low-tech tank, um, because it takes so long to see results and certain things takes patience as well. So if you're inexperienced uh, and the result is slow to come, it makes people keep changing their techniques and sometimes not for the better as well. So I just think that the low-tech journey 
um, the 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 growing plants without CO two. It's um, it's a much slower approach to mastering the the craft. For a good aquascape, do you need to use challenging plants? I think that they should look at ADA tanks and see the plants that they use in their gallery. Uh, you can look at all their tanks on uh, YouTube. Because I think that for most uh, other setups, they manage to achieve a high level of aesthetic um, beauty without the use of difficult plants. I would say that 90% of plants that they grow could be grow low tech. So they show great examples of using easy plants to give a very nice aesthetic outlook to a tank. So I think the default uh, nature style that is very popular in aquascaping circles is great for newbies. So using um, uh, a few simple pieces of hardscape combined with simple plants such as java fern, anubias, uh, hair grass, you can grow very beautiful tanks uh, based on this few hardy plant species. As you get into aquascaping, what's the one thing that you should splurge on? I think that if you are interested in aquascaping, like you, you, you want to be a more specialist in this art form and not just be an amateur, you should invest in hardscape. You need enough material before you can build the house. And I think having a larger choice of hardscape uh, gives the beginner a lot more options. Yeah. Whereas if uh, you have only three rocks, the number of permutations you can get out of that combination is so much less than if you have 10 or 20. Um, and I think that the, the person should get a variety of hardscape. That means don't get rocks that are all the same size. Uh, big rocks need medium rocks, medium rocks need small rocks. Uh, you need a gradation to have different textures uh, and form. Um, and I also advise the newbie, if you're serious in aquascaping, practice the hardscape in a dry tank and don't plant it, don't flood it. Just practice working with the wood and rock. Um, and having mastery with that uh, leads to less problems down the road because it's very difficult to modify a flooded tank. Um, but if you can practice and get good at hardscape dry, uh, the day that you want to set up a tank to be flooded, you, you, are, you end up with the skill set. Should new hobbyists find a group or club to help them develop their skills? I think it's, it's good to have a community to um, bounce your ideas off. But as with all communities from which you ask advice from, it is then hard to discern who is the one giving good advice. So I think that the concept of finding a couple of good mentors is good for every person. As in, this applies not only to aquascaping, but uh, other aspects of life as well. Um, because having a mentor means that that person also understands you. So it's like a two-way thing, that a relationship that you develop. Um, and you have a couple of good mentors that are skilled in different areas. Uh, you can level up your skill sets much more quickly. What's a good lifespan for an aquascape? So I have four large tanks at home. Uh, sorry, I have three large tanks at home. Uh, two three feet, three feet tanks and one four feet tank. And I, I do feel that it's a waste to create an intricate aquascape and tear it down within the year. So I do try to maintain uh, all my aquascapes about two years. And I'll rotate them uh, in the sequence of like, uh, the next competition that I want to participate in. Uh, sometimes if I'm busy, I may uh, tear down the tank but not set, set up anything else new in that. But uh, I'll say averagely, two years is a, is a good timeline I feel to feel that the tank has matured. Yeah. How many aquascapes do you need to make to get good? I think if you look at some of the, the, the good scapers in the world and you read their history, kind of, uh, you'll be surprised that how little number of tanks you actually have to do to get good. You can learn a lot in one setup um, if you're asking the right questions to, to the right people and all you have a good mentor. So I do think that the, the learning curve in that sense, you can steepen it tremendously. Uh, by looking for the right sources of information um, and yeah, having a good mentor, uh, having a good understanding of how certain techniques are done. So I would say like less than five skips, you can get very, very good. I want to thank Dennis for sitting down with me. And if you're interested in aquascaping, you should really go binge all of the videos on his YouTube channel. He is one of the most knowledgeable people in this hobby. 
And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. In the bottom left is another one of my favorites, and in the bottom right is a link to my Patreon. Without their support, videos like this would not be possible. Thanks so much and have a great day.